Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to graph a parabola. And uh, this is a quadratic equation. And uh, whenever you graph a quadratic equation, the graph that you get is called a parabola. Now this is called a parabola. Now parabola has got three uh, critical points. Now this is called x. This is one of the x-intercept and this is the other x-intercept. So here in this case, the parabola has the x-intercept of negative 1 and 5. Now this point, now this is called x-intercept because that's where the parabola cuts the x-axis. Now this point is called uh, the y-intercept. The same argument because the parabola cuts the y-axis at negative 5. And this point is called the vertex. So let me write that. This is the most important point of a parabola that is called the vertex. V-E-R-T-E-X. That's the same as in some books. They, it's also called turning point. Now, you can, I hope you understand why it's called turning point. Turning point. P-T stands for point. If you look at the parabola, now this is at this point. If you draw a line of symmetry, oh, I'll go back. I'm going to draw a line of symmetry. Now, what is a line of symmetry? A line of symmetry is a line which, let me highlight that slightly more. This, mm, this is a line of symmetry. Now, why is this called a line of symmetry? Because if you look at these, are the two parts of the parabola. So this is on the left and this is on the right. Now these two are reflection of each other. So this line, this line, uh, this is called the axis of symmetry. So let me write that. So that's called the axis of symmetry. Now axis of symmetry you can understand as a mirror line. That this is a mirror line, and these two are reflection of each other. And uh, this point is called the vertex. It's called turning point, and in this case, it is also called the minimum. So it has three different names. Uh, now, if this parabola is upside down, it goes upside down, then that's called. In that case, it will be the maximum. So here, the vertex or the minimum point, or the turning point, has the coordinate of 2, negative 9. And this is where the graph turns. So here, this, the, the value of the graph uh, goes down, 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 and this is the uh, lowest point that it reaches, OK? And then it goes up, OK? And that's why it's called a turning point. Now, <clears throat> uh, we're going to see how to graph this equation. There are different ways of graphing it, but I like to do it in a way which is called uh, where we write in a vertex form. Okay, so the first thing I'm interested in the vertex because the vertex is the most critical point. Okay, okay, one more thing about the x intercepts. The x intercepts are always, sorry, the vertex is always halfway between the x intercept. Okay, now if you want to find halfway between phi and negative 1, what you do is you add them and you divide it by 2. So if you add phi plus negative 1 is 4, that's right, phi plus negative 1 is 4, and then you divide by 2 is 4 divided by 2 is 2, and that's why 2 comes halfway between negative 1 and phi. Okay, so the best way, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the y-intercept. So I hope you know the y-intercept. You get the y-intercept. Okay, now let us understand what's the y-intercept. The y-intercept is where the x value becomes 0. Okay, now what does that mean? Okay, now let us look at the x y-intercept. Yeah, this is your, this is your y-axis. And this is your x-axis. Now, here, 
this is uh, this is your zero zero that's the origin now this at this point this point can if this is a point of course this is a point this point can also be written as zero negative phi okay instead of writing phi you can write zero negative phi so you can see this is the first number all, always tells me the x coordinate the second number tells me the y coordinate so the y intercept is where the x value becomes zero so what i'm going to do to find the x intercept of sorry the y intercept of a parabola what we're going to do we're going to set x is equal to zero okay so what happens so now my y becomes now x is zero so you've got x squared so that is zero squared minus 8 times 0 minus 9 okay so this is 0 squared is 0 minus 8 times 0 is 0 minus 9 and 0 minus 0 minus 9 gives you 9 so y is equal to negative 9 sorry so if you want to write this so the y intercept is 0 negative 9 okay so we will look at this later on so this is our x intercept so let me change my color so uh, the next is we're going to write uh, the vertex okay now to write in the vertex the vertex form you should have listened to my previous videos of writing this as a perfect square so I'm going to write this as a perfect square so we, the next is I'm going to write let me scroll this down a little so so the next is we want to write the equation, the given equation in the vertex form. I'll explain what the vertex form is. Okay. So the vertex form, let me write the equation again. So y is, y is equal to x squared minus 8x minus 9 is my equation. I'm going to write this in the vertex form. So the vertex form is you want to write this as a perfect square. Okay, so let me change, make it thinner. Okay. Okay, so. So if, uh, to make this a perfect square, what we do is you do the half of negative 8. Okay, so half of negative 8 is 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. And then square of negative 4 is 16 so we can write this as x squared minus 8x plus 16 minus 16 minus 9 okay so what have I done I have added 16 and I have taken away 16 so I have this and this are the same expression okay so what I have done is I've added 16 and taken away 16. The reason being, this has become a perfect square. Okay? Now, perfect square of what? Perfect square of x minus 4, the whole squared. And this is also a perfect square, minus 25. Okay, now this is called the vertex form. Now, if you think in a different way, that which are the two factors of 16 which gives you negative 8 okay I think you should be knowing the two factors of 16 which gives you negative 8 are negative 4 and negative 4 or if you think in a different way if you expand this that is x minus 4 times x minus 4 will give you this I'm going to write the next step so this is the vertex form so from this I can write the vertex quite easily so what's the vertex so the vertex is we will check this on a calculator this when I'm looking when I want to find the x value of the vertex what I do is I set this equal to 0 so this means when would this become 0 if you set this equal to 0 your x x value has to be 4 because 4 minus 4 is 0 or if you think in a different way this parabola or this equation tells me the basic parabola that is y is equal to x squared has moved 4 to the right 
and 25 down. So the vertex is 4, negative 25. We'll confirm this on the calculator. Okay, so this negative tells me it has gone to the right. If it was a plus here, the parabola would have gone to the left. Okay, and this minus means it has gone down. So here, just for you to remember, this minus means the parabola has gone to the right. And this minus means it has gone. So it has gone 4 to the right, and it has gone 25 down. Okay, so let me change the color. Okay, so let me make it a bit brighter. So this is the vertex. Okay, so 4, negative 25 is the vertex. Okay, so that's the most critical point. And now we want to find the x-intercept. So x-intercept, as we saw for y-intercept, y-intercept is when x is equal to 0. So think about it. When would x-intercept become 0? Let us look at the graph. Now I told you this is x-intercept, negative 1 and. So this negative 1, I hope you can understand, is negative 1, 0. And this point phi can be written as phi comma 0. So which value is 0 there? Very clearly the y value is 0. So x-intercept you get when your y value is equal to 0. So I can say x-intercept I get when y is equal to 0. So I'm going to use the vertex form. So let me write the vertex form again. So y is equal to x minus 4 squared minus 25 is the vertex form. Okay. Now I'm telling that to find the x-intercept, your y value has to be 0. Okay. So I'm going to write y is equal to 0 here. So if it's 0 is equal to x minus 4 squared. And 25 I can write as minus 5 squared. I'm going to write a formula which is very useful, okay? which is called difference of two squares. a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. Very simple and powerful formula. If you think about it, if you expand this, you will get this. So let us expand that. Okay. So if you expand this, a times a is a squared. a times negative b is negative ab. b times a is, you can write ba, but I'll write ab. And b times negative b is minus b squared. So this is same as a squared minus b squared. I'll continue this in the next video. Thank you.